In this video, we're going to learn how to access columns in a pandas data frame by the numerical column index. First, we're going to start by loading in pandas and a data set to work with here. All you have to do is use the dot iloc function and pass in a colon for the row indexer. So we'll give an example of doing that here. We're going to say empty cars, so that's the name of your data frame here, and then dot iloc, for, and then in the indexer for the row position, we want to put a colon. That means we want to get all of the rows for when we say comma and the thing that comes next is the index of the column we want and we're here we're going to get column two so when we run this this will get all the rows and at column two so when we do that we see column two is called disp so that should be the disp column and those values do match up now we can also get multiple columns using the same construction by instead passing in a list so if we wanted to do that we could say empty cars .iloc. again we want all the rows so we're going to put a colon in that position then comma now we're going to pass a list of index values two four and five so that will get us columns two four and five here so when we run that we can see we did get three columns this time now instead of passing in this colon to get all of the rows we could have also passed in a list of indices here to get a subset of rows that go along with our columns so an example of that would be something like this empty cars .iloc. we're going to get rows one five and seven and then we're going to get these columns again and I wanted to point out too that it's possible to do this without having to use iloc. You could instead use a subset of the columns themselves and just pass that into the normal data frame indexer. So when you normally index into a data frame just with square brackets, it's expecting a list of strings that are names of columns and it will get you back those columns. So we could essentially do the same thing by within the normal data frame indexer here without any lock or i lock in front of it we could pass in a list of the columns we want well the list of columns are stored in empty cars .columns, so we could pass that in and then within the indexer for the columns we could then pass in a numerical list of the columns we want to so this will ultimately get us the same values we want by passing in numerical indices, even though the empty cars.columns contain strings. It's just mapping these numbers into the column names first. So this is just an alternate way we could have done the same thing that we did before. If you found this video useful, you can drop a like and hit subscribe. And thanks for watching.